for section 6.2, uh, the achieve assignment is really quick. Uh, the first question here, I, I'm really not sure why it's in the assignment. It's ridiculously easy. It's just wanting you to uh, recall your properties of exponents, and it's asking us to find the equivalent form of four to the negative two power. Uh, of course, we know a negative exponent in the numerator means you have a positive exponent in the denominator. So our correct and only choice here would be one over four squared. We select that and move on. For the second question here, it's similarly wanting us to simplify uh, uh, root functions. So if this radical term, if I'm trying to think of how would I simplify nine over the root of six and it's asking us to match uh, each rationalized expression with its equivalent unrationalized expression. So we're given the unrationalized versions. I've shown how I would rationalize each one. If I have nine over the root of six, I would multiply by the root of six over the root of six, thus giving me nine on the root of six over six. And then we know nine over six would reduce down to three over two. For the second one, the 25 over two on the root of 10, I would get rid of that root of 10 in the denominator by multiplying by the root of 10. Of course, I have to multiply by an understood one, so I multiply by the root of 10 over the root of 10. That gives me 25 on the root of 10 over two times 10, which is 20. And then the 25 over 20 will reduce down by a factor of five to five over four. So I get five on the root of 10 over four for the final answer there. Uh, now for the next one here, you'll see uh, the 35 over the root of 10. What I did for that, similar to the last one, is I've just multiplied by the root of 10 over the root of 10. That gives me 35 on the root of 10 over 10. And again, just like last time, the 35 over 10 will reduce down by a factor of five to seven over two. So I have seven on the root of 10 over two. For the last one here, eight over five on the root of six, similar to the work first one, I multiply by the root of six over the root of six. That leaves me eight on the root of six, divided by five times six, which is 30. Eight over 30 reduces down to four over 15. So we get four on the root of six over 15. So then it's just a matter of matching those answers below here that you see. So I can see that uh, nine on the root of six should be uh, three on the root of six over two for that one. We know that our second one here, I'll pull this back up, our second one here, the 25 over two root of 10 simplified to five on the root of 10 over four. So we bring that one up here. And then the 35 over the root of 10 simplified to seven on the root of 10 over two. And we know that this was our last one here, reduced down to four on the root of six over 15. We check that and it's good. The next question is just going to go in and talk about how you would find the average value of a function. Uh, this is a good summary of the topics of this section here in a little two minute video. Uh, so it is worth your while to watch it, but it's nothing that I didn't talk about in the notes for this section. So I'll just go straight into the problems here. And this first problem is asking me to calculate the average value of one over 2x plus one raised to the three over two power on the interval zero to three. And I'm supposed to give the exact answer as a single rationalized fraction. Okay, so the work I did to show that is right here. And let me go ahead and pin this to the page so it'll stop disappearing. Now, so for number four, I'm supposed to find the average value of this function. So here's my f of x. I'm wanting to find the average value from zero to three. So average value of any function is one over b minus a on the integral from a to b, in this case, zero to three of f of x dx. Well, when I'm trying to integrate this, I, I went ahead and used substitution here and I let u equal the group two x plus one. And then I know that, well, in this case, if u is two x plus one, then du would need to be two with respect to x. 
I don't see a two with respect to X in the problem. So in the next step, I multiply by two on the inside and remember to divide by two on the outside. So on the outside of our integral, we're gonna have one third times one half, it's gonna give me a one sixth. We know the two DX is gonna become DU. In this group two X plus one, uh, to the, in the denominator to the three over two power, it's just gonna become U in the numerator to the negative three over two power. So once we integrate, or sorry, once we substitute and get this all in terms of U, we also need our limits of integration into terms of U. So all I did is I plugged zero in, U of zero gave me two times zero plus one for one. U evaluated at three was two times three plus one for seven. So instead of it integrating from zero to three, we're now integrating with respect to U from one to seven. So now, as I try to simplify that, I can say, well, U to the negative three over two power, I can integrate that pretty easily. I would add one to the exponent, it's gonna become U to the negative one half. Then I would divide by that exponent, dividing by a negative one half is the same thing as multiplying by negative two. That's where you see negative two, and then instead of writing u to the negative one half, I put it over u to the one half, or the square root of u in that denominator. So now as I'm trying to evaluate, you'd say, well, all right, if you're trying to plug the seven in, you'll get one sixth times negative two over the root of seven, and then for your bottom limit, you'd have uh, uh, minus a negative two over one, that's gonna be plus two. Now, whenever I went back to the main page, I had to try to find out which format that fit. So it was just a matter of simplifying this expression using these same principles of simplifying uh, root expressions. So I went ahead and I said, well, all right, this one sixth distributes through there and I would have negative two over six on the root of seven. So I went ahead and got a common denominator in that second one. It would already be two over six. I needed to get a, a root of seven in that denominator, so I also had to multiply the numerator by the root of seven. Two over six is the same thing as two on the root of seven over six on the root of seven. Now that I have the common denominator, I could combine my numerator and I would have had negative two plus two on the root of seven over six on the root of seven. Well, what did I do to get to this? I went ahead and reduced everything down by a factor of two. I said, this is the same thing as negative one over three root of seven plus the root of seven over three root of seven to give me negative one plus the root of seven over three root of seven. Then from this step to this step, I've just multiplied by the root of seven over the root of seven in the denominator, that gave me three times seven is 21. In the numerator, if you multiply each of these terms by the root of seven, you get the negative root of seven plus seven. Now, that's probably better written as the non-root term written first. So I can say, well, that's the same thing as seven minus the root of seven over 21, which you'll see matches one of their multiple choice answers here. So seven minus the root of seven over 21, uh, that's their second option right here. Check that answer. It's gorgeous. Up next here. Number five takes us back to a more straightforward problem. We're not trying to match any of their uh, specific answers. We just need to find the answer. Uh, for the average value of x to the fifth on the interval between one and seven. So I can say, well, I know that the average value of the function is just one over uh, the integral, sorry, one over b minus a times the integral from a to b of f of x dx. In this problem, that's one over seven minus one on the integral evaluated from one to seven of x to the fifth dx. My coefficient out in front becomes one sixth, the integral one to seven of x to the fifth dx. I know that this is just power rule when I integrate, so I'll get x to the sixth over six in there. Now I need to evaluate this from one to seven. When I plug the seven into that expression, I got the 117,649 all over a denominator of six times six, 36. We always subtract the lower limit. Well, the lower limit's just going to be a one over the denominator of 36. Uh, 
whenever we simplify that out, we get to this fraction and that fraction divided evenly to give me a nice number of 3,268. We'll try that and check answer. Yes. All right, for number six here. For six, again, similarly, I'm just trying to find the average value of, in this case, two cosine x between x equals zero and x equals pi over two. So I say one over pi over two minus zero just makes my denominator pi over two. On the integral from zero to pi over two of f of x dx to cosine x dx. What I've done in this step is I knew that the one over pi over two would be the same thing as two over pi. If you divide by a fraction, then you multiply by its reciprocal. So the outside of my integral was two over pi. I just factored this two out with it and called it four over pi. And then I integrated cosine to be sine. And then I, now I need to evaluate that from zero to pi over two and take that answer and multiply by four over pi. Well, the sine of pi over two is one minus the lower limit, the sine of zero is just zero. I simply get four over pi times one for a final answer of four over pi. I'll need to use their palette for the pi, so I'll say four divided by pi. Check that answer, and of course, it's right. Uh, we move on to the next page here. Gorgeous. Uh, we'll look at number seven. The work I did for number seven is right here. It gives me six x to the negative two power. I need to find the average value of that uh, function from five to from five to ten. So one over ten minus five on the integral from five to ten of six x to the negative two dx. We use the power rule to evaluate this. Of course, my outside is just one fifth. When I integrate on the inside, six x to the negative two becomes six x to the negative one divided by that new exponent of negative one. Uh, now, of course, we'd need to evaluate this from five to 10. I didn't want to leave it in that sloppy notation. So I said, well, that's, I know that I'm multiplying by negative six on the inside. I just took that and said, well, then the outside is negative six over five. X to the negative one is the same thing as one over X. The function of X, you have to evaluate from five to 10. Okay, so we're going to have negative six over five times the group one over 10 minus the lower limit of one over five. Well, one over 10 minus one over five, that's the same thing as one over 10 minus two over 10, gives me a negative one over 10. Negative six times negative one over 10 would give you negative six over 50, which reduces down to, or sorry, positive, negative times a negative is a positive, positive six over 50, which reduces down to three over 25. And they are wanting fractional answers here whenever possible, so I'll leave it as a fraction. And Achieve likes it. The last question in this very short section, we have this trinomial that we're, uh, sorry, this cubic, I should say, this binomial, this cubic equation that we're trying to find the average value of this function between negative one and five. So I'll say, well, one over b minus a, one over five minus a negative one, that's gonna give me a one sixth on the outside. The integral from negative one to five of two x cubed minus six x squared dx. Once again, we can just use the power rule. The first term is gonna become two x to the fourth over four, which means it's gonna be x to the fourth over two. The second term minus six x to the third over three, six over three reduces down to two and I get minus two x cubed. I evaluate that expression from negative one to five. When I plug in the five, I get five to the fourth power. Uh, that's gonna be your, uh, uh, well, actually, let's see, five to the fourth, that's 625. Uh, ooh, I think I might have an error here. I said five to the fourth is one. Oh, that's the completely simplified. I, I, I started, to think, I, I started to, to think I made an error there because five to the fourth is, 625 over two, but then when you subtract the two times 125, 625 over two minus two times 125, that's gonna simplify to be 125 over two. That's your upper limit. Now minus your lower limit. When you plug a negative one into this expression, you're going to get a five over two. Upper limit minus lower limit, 
When you multiply that by one sixth, you'll get 60 over six, which of course reduces down to 10. We check that final answer for our average value and the chief says, absolutely. All right, guys. So as you can see, this is probably, well, not probably, definitely our shortest section that we've had thus far. Uh, let me know if you have any questions in here, though. We'll, we'll get you straightened out. Uh, this should be a section where we can get you 100% credit without much issue whatsoever.